significant figures, or sig figs as we like to call it, one of the least favorite things that comes up in the beginning of chemistry classes. And I know there's so many rules and they all seem so different no matter where you look online. Well, I'm gonna make it simple for you. The first two rules are actually simple. All non-zero numbers are considered significant figures. Non-zero numbers include 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. The second rule, any zeros between two non-zero numbers are also considered significant figures. These are the two rules that you must always consider when determining how many significant figures should be in your answer. The confusing rules are the ones about the zeros that are not between two non-zero numbers. So these are the rules that I am going to make simpler for you. Rule number three, as I usually tell students, zeros that they have to write are not considered significant figures. So what do I mean by zeros that they have to write? Well, in the number 200, for example, the two zeros have to be written. If they were not written, this would be the number 2 instead of 200, which is a big difference. So the number 200 actually only has one significant figure. Or the number 0 0.07. These two zeros have to be written. This zero has to be written based on convention of writing decimals, and this zero has to be written as a placeholder. Otherwise, without these two zeros, this would just be the number 7. So the number 0 0.07 only has one sig fig. Rule number four, as I usually tell students, zeros that they bother to write are considered significant figures. So what are zeros that they bother to write? So if you see something like this, 2.00, they didn't have to write these zeros, but they bothered to write it in the word problem, which means you will bother to show them in your answer. So this number here, 2.00 has three sig figs. Or what about this number, 7.200? These zeros did not have to be written, but they bothered to write them in the word problem, which means you will bother to put them as significant figures in your answer. So this number, 7.200, has four significant figures. So let's see another example. How about 7,040? How many sig figs do you think this number has? Well, first of all, it has two non-zero numbers in it, so that's at least two sig figs. And then there's a zero between two non-zero numbers, so that's another sig fig. Now this zero they have to write. If they don't write it, this is not 7,040, it's 704, which is a big difference. So this is not a significant figure, which means there's only three sig figs in this number. Let's look at a decimal, 0.021. How many sig figs do you think this number has? Well, this zero has to be written based on convention of writing decimals, and this zero also has to be written because it's a placeholder in the decimal. So these two are considered non-significant figures. But these are non-zero numbers, so they are indeed significant figures. So this number only has two sig figs. So let's look at a big number. How about a whole number with a decimal? Let's say 6,070.3020. How many sig figs do you think this number has? Well, first of all, there's one, two, three, four non-zero numbers in it. So there's at least four sig figs. And then we have one, two, 
three zeros that are between non-zero numbers. So those zeros are considered significant figures. So there's three more. And then this zero at the end right here did not have to be written. They bothered to write this zero, which means it is indeed a significant figure. So there's one more significant figure. So this number right here has a total of eight sig figs. So I want to bring up the decimal rule, which tends to be confusing when certain values are seen in word problems. So let's start with 300. Well, we've seen this before. The two zeros have to be written, which means they are not considered significant figures. So the only significant figure here is the three. So this number only has one significant figure. But what if they had 300 with a decimal point after it? Well, they bothered to write this decimal point, which means they are considering these two zeros significant figures, which means this number now has three significant figures. Likewise, if they had 300.0, once again, they bothered to write a decimal point as well as a zero after it, which means now the number has four significant figures. So now I'll show you significant figures in scientific notation. So suppose we had five times 10 to the third. Well, the 10 to the third indicates to move the natural decimal place to the right three places, giving us 5,000. And as we saw before, these zeros have to be written which means they are not considered significant figures. So the only significant figure in this number is the five, the non-zero digit. So this only has one significant figure. So, so now suppose we had five times 10 to the negative third. Well, once again, the 10 to the negative third indicates to move the natural decimal place to the left three places, giving us 0 0.005. Like we saw before, these zeros have to be written, which means they are not considered significant figures. So the only significant figure here is also the five, the non-zero digit. So this number only has one significant figure. So now what if they had 5.0 times 10 to the third? Well, not much different than the previous ones. As we saw before, 10 to the third indicates three zeros to the right, and they are not considered significant because we have to write them. But they bothered to put a decimal place and an extra zero. And if they bother to write an extra zero, you will bother to show it as a significant figure in your answer. So this number actually has two significant figures. There are three more rules I have to bring up when it comes to showing the right number of significant figures in your answer. One rule has to deal with rounding, when to round. Another rule has to deal with adding and subtracting to solve problems. And the third rule has to do with multiplying and dividing to solve problems. First, only round your answer. Don't round any numbers before performing any calculations. Calculate all answers with the numbers as given in the word problem, and then round your answer to the proper number of significant figures. When you have to add or subtract values given in a word problem to solve the problem, you will only focus on the number of significant figures in the decimal portions of those values. And your answer should have the same number of significant figures in its decimal portion as the value with the least number of significant figures in its decimal portion given in the word problem. So for instance, if I were to add 3.01 plus 26.6, .6, 
I'll look at the significant figures in each of the decimal portions. So this one has two significant figures. And remember, the zero is indeed significant here because it's between two non-zero numbers. And in this decimal portion, I only have one significant figure, which means my answer should only have one significant figure. But I will add these as given to me in the word problem to get 29.61. Well, there's two significant figures in the decimal here. However, I can only have one significant figure because we always look at the number given in the word problem that has the least number of significant figures in the decimal portion when adding and subtracting. So I will have to round this to 29.6 to reflect only one significant figure in the decimal portion. When multiplying or dividing to solve a word problem, you have to look at all significant figures in the values given in the word problem, whole number and decimal. And your answer should have the same number of significant figures as the value with the least number of significant figures given in the word problem. So for instance, if I were multiplying 4.07 times 2.1, the first thing I would do is determine how many significant figures each of these numbers has. This has a total of three significant figures, while this has only two significant figures. And remember, the number with the least significant figures is the number of significant figures I should have in my answer. But I'm going to multiply these as is without rounding to get 8.5. Four, seven. However, because the value with the least number of significant figures has only two significant figures, my answer should only have two significant figures, which means I have to round it to two significant figures. So my answer should actually be 8.5. Simple as that.